In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady Cordemtrix, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, today we begin again in 2022 Holy Week with the Palm Sunday, recounting our Lord's entrance into Jerusalem on that important day as he begins the most important part of his work, the work of salvation. St. Maximian Colby writes that our Lord lived a hidden life of 30 years and that his public ministry was only three years but his life, or his, the, the main object of his whole work, the work of redemption, was only three hours. But of course we know that our Lord was looking forward to those three hours, how he desired to go and offer himself for love of us. And he begins it on this Palm Sunday by his entrance into Jerusalem in a very uncharacteristic way of anybody who would be considered a conqueror. He doesn't come like the worldly come, you know, with a big entourage in the sense of a, a massive amount of soldiers carrying, you know, their banners and, and drums and all kinds of instruments to, to bring about, you know, this triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Instead, our Lord comes and he asks them to find for him not just a donkey, but a young donkey, a, a colt, a young ass to ride on as he enters into Jerusalem. Now some may think, well, our Lord entered, but the, the, you know, it's never been ridden on before, that maybe he subdued it by his divine dignity and that that animal behaved very meekly, bringing him into Jerusalem. But since our Lord, you could look at it another way, since the whole point of his entry was to show his humility, maybe that little ass acted very, you know, not too cooperative. Maybe it was kind of a, kind of a spectacle. You know, here we see these people saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, and yet it may have been kind of a, a comical kind of entry into Jerusalem in one sense. You could look at it either way, probably. But whatever it is that, um, uh, the author of the Humility of Our Hearts says that the, that the jackass that our Lord rode into, Cal into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday is the model of humility. Why? Because the jackass knew that the people were not praising him, but the one who rode on his back. And that he knew that all the glory that was being heaped on him was not because of himself, but because of the one that he was serving. So. However, our Lord entered into Jerusalem, it was a great humiliation for him. It humbled himself in every aspect of his life. That he who was the Son of God, the eternal Word, who processed from the Father, was begotten by the Father, excuse me, from all eternity, and proceeded from his Father to become man, humbled himself in every aspect of his life, was a life of humiliation, considering his great dignity as the Son of God. And of course, this is to be our example, how our Lord defeated Satan, who was the proud, the proud one, and all the proud ones that have followed him throughout the ages, everyone who chooses to follow after him, our Lord has defeated him by his humility, by the fact that he lowered himself. It says that he humbled himself even unto death, death on the cross. And we are reminded as we go through Holy Week that just as our Lord experienced in his own life as the head of the mystical body, so the church undergoes those same mysteries as the mystical body that follows after him. He said, the servant is no greater than the master. You know, these same people who were crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
we are reminded that those very same people, probably only, you know, five days later, were saying, crucify him, crucify him. Showing the fickleness, you know, how easily we can be deceived or how easily we can, you know, so many people kind of follow the which way the wind of popularity is going. One minute they're on your side and then the next minute they want to crucify you. The church has undergone this throughout the ages, you know. The church has had times where the church has been very much respected, like the, in Christendom, when the church was really had an influence in society, that it helped to shape the everyday lives of so many people, because really the church was respected and seen as the voice of God on earth. Today we may see that our, the church is more like that crucify them, crucify them, because the church is not popular today. To be a follower of Christ is not popular today, at least from the worldly point of view. But we want to make sure that whether it's good times or bad, kind of like that marriage rite, you know, the vo vow formula, in good times and bad, in sickness and in health, that we will be faithful to our Lord and Master by our baptismal promises. You know, that whole ritual that we have undergone symbolizes that our Lord has espoused himself to us by his passion and death, that that wedding feast he obtained for us, obtained for him his bride, the church. And so we must also be followers of Christ. We must imitate him in his humility and in his suffering. I was struck even, you know, by the prayers of the church that, that we are to follow our Lord in the way of suffering. That is probably the one thing that we don't like to hear. You know, we like, we want to be his followers when times are good, but it's difficult at times when we find that we are being persecuted or because of some physical ailment that he allows us to undergo, we can sometimes want to, you know, wish that we weren't his followers. Or that, you know, why Lord, why me? It may be the question on so many people's lips. But when we look at the followers of our Lord, the great saints, if you maybe just take up any saint's life this week and read it, you'll see that it, he, they also have followed our Lord in the way of suffering. And I'm not promoting a movie, but I would encourage you to go and see this movie that's supposed to come out in Holy Week called Father Stew. This is a great story of a modern day follower of Christ who served our Lord in the most unlikely way. His priesthood was mostly one of suffering. Spent most of his time debilitated but yet he exercised great work. When you think of St. Clair and all the great works that she did in founding all these monasteries and attracting so many young women who gave up their nobility to follow the poor ladies of St. Clair in following Christ, she spent 40 years pretty much bedridden. She couldn't get out of bed. You think, well, she should have had so much energy and go out there and, you know, start monasteries. But it was all done pretty much laying on a bed of suffering that she obtained her great work. When we think of St. Maximilian Kolbe and you read his life of how he went to Japan and began all of his great works of evangelization, you know, translating his, his magazine into Japanese already like within three months of being there. And all the great zeal that he had for the missions and wanting to spread the faith. He spent most of his time sick. He could not eat the food. He found the food difficult. He also had, you know, one half of a half of one lung. Not a half of a half. So he had a quarter of a lung because of tuberculosis. And sometimes when he had to offer the mass, he had to have two of the brothers to support him under both arms so that he could stay standing while he offered the Mass. He even went, while he was in Japan, to go on a mission trip, to go and see about the possibility of establishing another mission 
in India. And he made the trip sick on the boat, even throwing up and having a fever. But he didn't let that deter him from doing what he knew was the will of God because he knew that suffering was going to be a part of his life. And he just learned to live with it and to offer it. And that's what brought about his greatest work. And that's what brought about our Lord's greatest work is his suffering that he would undergo later on in this week that we call to mind the passion of our Lord. So let us also be reminded that in this world today that we are going to have to follow after him, take up our cross. We hear that so much. You know, we hear it from our mothers who told us to offer it up when we complained about something. But it truly is the way that we must follow Christ. That we can find even joy. It's even St. Francis, that great troubadour of the Lord. I was reminded recently that St. Francis, of all the sufferings that he endured, many of them he took upon himself. You know, that he would fast 740 day Lent out of the year. That's 280 days out of the year he fasted. He didn't eat anything or drink anything till the 40th day, which had to be a grace from God. But all the other physical afflictions that he was going blind and eventually he received the stigmata, the wounds of our Lord, that he sang. He was also the great saint who sang so many things. He, great, he composed so many canticles that he composed, especially the canticle of Brother Sun and Sister Moon, you know, while he was suffering and finished it before he died. That, you know, he, we know that he did not let his suffering overcome him because he was able to sing. That he found that he could even praise God in the midst of his trials and difficulties. We look out at the world today and we know that there are many things that cause us concern. We look out at the world that seems to be even more hostile against the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many who are promoting a different view of the human person. They call it transhumanism, but it really is subhumanism. It is not a picture. You know, the whole trick of the devil is that he says, you're going to be better once you deny God's reality. But that's not how it works. Our Lord shows us by his humility that we will conquer to the degree that we accept his will whether it be in good times or in bad, that if we have to endure for the sake of love of Christ, whatever comes our way, that we will be victorious and we will be rewarded. The whole point is there is a life beyond this one. There's more to meets the eye and that our Lord promises us if we are faithful to him, that he will reward us with eternal life where there will be no more suffering Suffering is short, as our Holy Father, St. Francis, reminds us. Glory is infinite. And that the thing that should motivate us in our trials and difficulties, so that we don't allow our sufferings to make us bitter, but rather better, is that love of God. That we love God and that we love our neighbor, even when our neighbor is persecuting us. That that is the key to making Good Friday into Easter Sunday. Let us today, as we enter into this Holy Week, join with all the saints who have gone ahead of us. Ask them to help us today, that just like the saints of old, that we will be the saints of today, that we will become saints by the degree to the measure in which we imitate Christ, both imitating Christ in those good things, the good times, rejoicing, both also in the good and in the times when things are not so good, especially when we are maybe on the cross with our Lord, like so many saints who were able to even joke with their executioners and persecutors, that they did not let the suffering of the moment, let it cloud their vision of the future glory. Like Francisco de Osuno says, you, he says, you're not truly worthy of the name to be called a Christian. You're not worthy of the name Christian if you only glorify and praise God in the good times. 
But when you can praise God and bless Him, and even maybe sing those blessings, when you are on the cross, when you are suffering, that is when you are worthy of that title. Let us pray that we too will be worthy of the title of followers of Christ. And ask Our Lady especially, who is our model and our mother in the way of suffering, to show us the way, to help us to know, not only know our Lord's will, but to love it. As St. Francis also prayed in his absorbent, may the power of your love, O Lord, fire and sweet as honey, wean my heart from everything under heaven, so that I may die for love of your love, you who were so good as to die for love of my love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.